Hey everyone, Chris McGinnis here. Welcome to another edition of Let's Read. And for this one, I'm going to begin tackling a longer story again. In fact, it's so long, I'm going to have to split it into parts because I really don't want to sit here and read all 52 chapters in one sitting. That's right, 52 chapters. I don't know what the average length of them are. They might be really short chapters, some of them might be long. All I'm going to say is that, you know, 52 chapters in one sitting, I don't think so. So, like I said, I'm going to release this in uh, five parts, I think. The first ten parts will be ten chapters each, and then the final part will be uh, the final twelve chapters. So today I'm reading uh, what I've heard described as one of the oddest fan thick works out there. Uh, it's described on fanfiction.net as a Sailor Moon and Harry Potter crossover, but uh, somehow I have a feeling that's not uh, the least of the weirdness, so... Here we go. Let's read The Battle for the Worlds Between Worlds Beyond by Harlow Kettering. Chapter 1 The Beginning. My name is Harlow Kettering, and I'm 15 not too long ago I had the craziest adventure. You totally wouldn't believe it. It all started a few days before school dance. I woke up in my bed and looked in the mirror. Of course, I saw myself staring back. It would have been really scary if it had been someone else. Well, duh. I don't think I'm that pretty, but everyone says I am, so I think that's really good. I have long black hair, and I'm kind of pale, and my eyes are the same color as ice cubes. At school, I was at my locker talking to my best friend, Rudolfo, when a really cute guy walked up to me. It was the hottest guy in school. He kind of looked like Robert Pat Pattinson, which made him even super cutter. His name was Dillinger, and he had brown hair. I was wearing a pair of girl jeans that clung to my thin but still shapely body. It was cold outside, so I had a red sweater on, on that. Hey, Harlow, he said all smiley. According to Rudolfo, my face turned so red. I was so embarrassed, but I tried to play it real cool so he wouldn't know I thought he was cute. Hello, I said. Are you going to the dance, he asked all smiley. I think so, I said kind of sadly, since I didn't have a date. Do you want to go with me, he asked. OMG, yes I do! I shouted a bit too loud. He smiled at me. See you then, and walked away. I couldn't believe it. Rudolph was jealous. She stared swords at me. Stared spelled like the ones you walk up and down. But I had a date with a hottie, spelled H-A-W-T-I-E. I guess I should pronounce that hottie. It was crazy. But things went even cra- You see, you're in English class because another boy who looked like Justin Bieber asked me to the dance. And at lunch, the same thing happened with a boy who looked like Taylor Lautner. And just as leaving school, another boy who looked like Benicio Del Toro asked me out. I know some of you are saying, Harlow, why did you let all those boys ask you out? Well, according to my dad, I've always been a girl who couldn't say no. Oh my god, it's Addu Annie. So I try not to worry too much for the next few days and hope that maybe something to fix my situation. But little did I know, things would get even crazier. Okay. Uh, next. This is great for everyone out there watching these sit here as I wait for this to load. Okay, here we are. Chapter 2. The Beginning. Wait, what? Okay, I guess it's another beginning. Or related to the earlier beginning. Alright, whatever. Chapter 2, the beginning. The night of the dance was tonight, and I was kind of freaking out about having so many dates. I was sort of hoping that maybe one or two of the boys would cancel, and maybe they wouldn't be allowed to go to the dance or something, so that I wouldn't have to find out that I said yes to so many guys. But I showed up at the dance anyway, with Rudolfa. Rudolfa was nice, and she had a lot of money, but she was also kind of ugly. She had long, cur brown, curly hair, and kind of a big nose, and her parents were always making her go to temple, so she wouldn't always hang out as much as I would have wanted to. Have lots of money, has a big nose, and she goes to temple. Congratulations for the unflattering Jewish stereotype. I showed up looking really cute and good looking while, while Rudolfa tried and did okay. Everyone stopped what they were doing and looked at me as I entered the gym. 
I felt kind of shy, but gave everyone a wave that they went back to what they were doing. But soon, I saw all the guys walking towards me. I hoped they wouldn't see each other, so I ducked behind the tower balloons. I closed my eyes and put a hand over my heart and wished I could just go somewhere else and not have to talk to them. And then, I was gone. Chapter 3. Another World When I opened my eyes, I was in a place that was not my gym. It was like I was standing in space with stars and blackness everywhere. But I wasn't floating. It was like it was a floor underneath my feet. Rudolph, for God damn it! I yelled angrily. What did you do? Rudolph, I had nothing to do with this, said a mystical sounding voice. I jumped and looked around. Who is there in the darkness in which I cannot see? I yelled serenely. Suddenly, a man approached in front of me, and I recognized him immediately. You're Kyle McLaughlin, I shouted. Yes, I am, he said, tossing his hair. Why am I here? Did my wish come true? No. You are here because your world, world, all of the worlds, are in danger from a force of great evil. OMG! That's right. The evil beings of all the worlds have gathered together to try and take over all the worlds. And I've decided to intervene, choosing one champion from each world to do battle with the evil on a world created solely as a battlefield. And you are your world's champion. That's crazy! I roared. Soon you'll be teleported to this world, and it is up to you to defeat the champions of evil. You can only use your immense talents to stop them. If the champions of good fail, then we are all doomed. Before I could ask anything, I was teleported, and I was suddenly in what appeared to be a vast city. Chapter 4 The Vasts A Vast City What the shit? I shouted. I've never been in a city like this before. It seemed abandoned, just empty building after empty building. I turned and yelled to Rodolfo to run over, and she did as fast as her knobby knees could carry her. What are we gonna do, Harlow? she asked. When did she even get there? Whatever, moving on. Well, I guess we should find some weapons or something if we're going to fight. I scanned the horizon, using my keen eyesight. I see a weapon shop, I yelled, pointing a few blocks down to a store with a large sword that a large sun that had swords, axes, guns, lightsabers, and bows and arrows. I turned to look at Rodolfo, but there was suddenly a lot of explosion that blew Rudolfo into a telephone pole. Spelled P-O-L-L. Rudolfo, I screamed anguishly. It's not a word. But before I could run to her, I saw Voldemort floating in the air, his thick, greasy black hair flowing all around him. No! I shouted. I didn't have anything to use to defend myself, so I waved my hands at him, trying to scare him away. And it worked. His eyes widened, and he flew off. And stay gone, you shit ass! I yelled at him, raising my fist, sticking my middle finger up at him. I ran to Rodolfo. Her head was bleeding, making her greasy hair even grosser than usual. Our eyes looked, and I saw the life leaving her eyes. It was really sor It was really sad. If you're crying, I'm sorry. I held her hand and kissed it. It tasted like grease and kosher salts. She gave a look that let me know that she wanted me to win so that our world would be safe. And then she went all limp and stuff and died. I cried for like five minutes. I left Rudolfo's bar in the street and made my way to the weapon shop. The next time I saw a villain, I was going to stop them for good. Halfway to the store, I heard crying. I turned my head and saw a woman with orange hair crying in the doorway. I gasped as I saw her face. It was... Sarah Goldfarb! I have no clue who that is. Chapter 5. The Champions When she saw my face, Sarah quickly waved me into the house. When I walked in, the room smelled like onions and farts. But in the middle of the room was a big circle table. Sitting at the table were a few of the heroes. I was so excited! Hello there, said Sailor Moon. Yes, hello, said the Powerpuff Girls. Hello, said Nomi. I have no idea who that is. I couldn't believe I was in the same room with such heroes. Nomi was sitting in the corner eating a hamburger, ketchup falling onto her naked body. There was a large map on the table, and the Powerpuff Girls and Sailor Moon were looking over it. Sarah shuffled into the corn and began to argue with Nomi about the hamburger. So there should be an enemy base in the woods just outside the city, Sailor Moon said, gently stroking her hand up Buttercup's back. Well, we're going to need something to slip inside, said Blossom, who was wearing pink. I'll do it, I volunteered. They all looked at me. You are so brave. We admire you, Sailor Moon. And they all nodded, even Nomi. So we're going to go out and create a distraction while you sneak into the base and destroy it, said Bubbles, who was wearing blue. But I'll need a weapon, I said affirmatively. Nomi got up and walked up to me. She had a big, goofy grin. She pulled out a switchblade and handed it to me. Use this, she said. Thanks, I shouted. Erwin got up and left to go to create a distraction. 
I sat in a chair for a bit and finished off Nomi's rice. Suddenly, I heard a big kaboom crash, and I knew the distraction had begun. I was scared. Chapter 6, The Great Bat. I ran from the building, and I ran as hard as my muscular legs could to the woods. It was really scary. Probably bears and stuff in there, so I held up Nomi's switchblade ready to cut whoever I saw. I walked into a clearing. It was a giant bat. Villains were gathered in the field while Sailor Moon and the Sailor Scouts were floating on their jetpacks. Okay, I'm not a Sailor Moon expert by any means, but I don't remember them ever having jetpacks. Using their magic wands to blast people away. It was so cool. The Powerpuff Girls were shooting their eye beams at people, and Nomi was spinning into around a tree trunk, shooting people with two guns. I saw the big forest fortress and ran for it. It was like a big castle. I ran through a side entrance and walked around the hallway. Outside I could hear booms and crashes, and I hoped my new friends would be safe. I walked into a room and I gasped. There were boxes of TNT everywhere. I was so scared that I might blow up. But I was brave and I took my switchblade and stabbed a stick of dynamite with my switchblade. Self-destruct in ten minutes, said a loud computer voice. I quickly started to run, trying to find an exit. But I came out on top of a tower. I looked around. There was nowhere to go. Hey, darling, said a voice. I gasped and turned around. It was Crystal Connors. Again, I have no clue who this is. She smiled an evil smile at me. I pulled out my switchblade and was getting ready to cut this turkey's throat, but before I could, she grabbed my head and kissed me. It was a gay kiss. I shoved her away. That's wrong, I screamed. She hit the ground and her head popped off into my hands. Before I could do anything, Professor Umbridge ran out and she was waving a wand, which turned into a giant sword. I'm going to kill you, bitch, she screamed menacingly. Unfortunately for you, I'm about to get ahead of the pack. I snarked, tossing Crystal, Crystal's head at her, which exploded upon hitting her, blowing her off the tower. Sailor Moon! I yelled, waving my arms. Help me! Sailor Moon came flying towards me, grabbing me in her arms and carrying me away as the castle exploded. Chapter 7. Tragedy. The villains ran after they saw how I'd blown up their castle. As we landed, all of the heroes were cheering for me. You performed admirably, said Bubbles, who was still wearing blue. Yeah, you were awesome, said Nomi, doing a victory dance. Where will we head next? I asked one to stop to the villains once and for all. I don't know, said Sailor Moon. We only know about this one facility. We're in the dark as to the rest of the enemy's strongholds. There was suddenly a loud noise, and we all turned around. It was Sue Sylvester! She was wearing a tracksuit made out of bones and holding a giant machine gun. What the hell? Prepare to die, shits! She screamed and bullets began to shoot everywhere. I dove to the ground, covering my head. I looked up and saw Nomi being riddled with bullets. Her implants exploded and liquid silicon flying all over the place. Nomi! I screamed, tears pouring down my face as her torso was ripped open, and soon the only thing remaining of Nomi Malone were her legs from the knees down, which were still standing. The Sailor Scouts flew away with the Powerpuff Girls. You can do it, Harlow! They screamed. Sue looked at me and aimed the machine gun at me. I did a barrel roll. I rolled behind the tree where I found a rare candy. You're not a Pokemon. How is that going to help you? Score! I shouted as I quickly swallowed as bullets began to tear into the tree behind me. I leveled up. I jumped from behind the tree and raised my fist, creating a fireball, which I threw at the gun, causing it to explode. I saw Ch Sue's charred body laying on the ground, twitching as she had her last few agonizing moments. I jumped in the air. I did it! I shouted as Sailor Moon and the Powerpuff Girls returned. I began to run to them, and suddenly I feel sick. I stumbled and almost fell before Sailor Moon caught me. Are you okay, she asked? No, I said. Sailor Moon waved her hands over me to see what was wrong. She gasped and took a step back. Harlow, something happened with Crystal in the forest? Yes, I said all blushy. Harlow, I'm sorry, but you have... AIDS. What? She was kissed on the head by this person. That's not how AIDS works. <sighs> Moving on. Chapter 8, Search for a Cure. No, I screamed. I can't have AIDS. It's not fair. Sailor Moon strokes over my hair. Don't worry. There's an enemy stronghold in the city where I heard they were developing a cure for AIDS. 
If we sneak in and steal it, you'll be cured. I let out a sigh of relief. We buried Nomi's legs and said a prayer of her grave. I only hope that you'd be the only person I have to say goodbye to in this quest. We decided to go back to the city to try and find the research building where the age cure was being developed. When we walked into the city, I almost fell. I was feeling weak from having AIDS. Just then, I heard the sound of someone bumping into a trash can. The Powerpuff Girls flew into the alley and emerged carrying Draco Malfour. He was fighting and arguing, when, but when he saw me, he stopped. Blossom threw him onto the ground. Tell us where they're making the AIDS cure, Sailor Moon said, kicking Draco in the stomach. He lay that, let out a cry like the grape lady, so it must have really hurt. I don't even know what that sentence means. No, I'm not telling you anything, Sailor Boobs. Sailor Moon roared like a boar. Tell me where it is or I'll kick you until you shit yourself, she shouted. I quickly sat down next to Draco, holding my hand in his. Please, I said, looking him in the eye. I have AIDS. When Draco heard that, he softened. I'll take you to, he said. We both got up and he held my hand. I felt my face going red as he led us through the city. Soon we walked into an alley and Draco knocked on a brick wall. I was all confused until I heard someone say, What's the password? Draco looked at me and cleared his throat. Evil is right and good is wrong. Correct, said the voice, and the brick wall opened in front of us. And with that, we headed into the evil lair. Chapter 9, The Evil Lair We went into the lair. The walls were metal-like and seemed all technological, like a lab in a spaceship movie. Me, Draco, and Rudolph had tiptoed through the hallways. Draco, I said askingly, do you know where the cure is? No, spoke Draco. I'm not allowed to go to a lot of places here since I'm not evil enough. I gave him a thumbs up. I'd say okay in my book, I said. Oh my god, you two are such a perfect couple, couple, Rudolfa said, moving her hands a lot. Rudolfa, don't be silly, I screamed. She just smiled and continued sucking on a cube of I cup of ice cubes. We soon found a huge door and heard lots of voices behind it. I tried to hear someone say the word AIDS, and someone eventually did. This is it, I whispered, looking at the two. When I opened the door, people were probably going to fire lasers at us or something, so get ready. I opened the door and saw a giant tube being poked and pried by a series of robot arms. Controlling their arms behind a thick piece of clear plastic was Hitler. Oh, God. The Nazis saw us and they pulled out laser rifles and began firing. I dove behind the computer, pulling Draco with me. I turned and saw Rudolfa get shot in the face, her head turning into ash and blowing away. Her body fell to the ground and I ran to her. Our eyes locked and I saw the light leaving her eyes. It was really sad. If you're crying, I'm sorry. I held her hand and kissed it. It tasted like grease and kosher salts. She gave me a look that let me know that she wanted me to win so that our world would be safe. And then she went all limp and stuff and died. I cried for like five minutes. Why well, I get the feeling this is going to be a really, really stupid running gag? I jumped in the air and began shooting fireballs at all the Nazis, causing their guns to blow up. They ran and I looked up at Hitler and stuck my middle finger up at him. I'm going to show you my Eva Braun. Braun spelled like strength. Chapter 10, Battle with Das Führer. Hitler jumped through the plastic, sh shattering into a billion pieces. He landed in front of me and pulled out a weird stick. He waved it about, Germany, planet power. He disappeared in the flash and reappeared as Sailor Germany. Let that image haunt your nightmares for a little bit. Hitler was a sailor scout. I screamed. So did Draco. He, sat, he shot giant Nazi symbols made out of energy at us and we had to keep running while computers and stuff exploded. I'm gonna piss on your brain, bitch! Hitler screamed, only in a German accent as we evaded his attacks. Me and Draco ran for the door, opening it and running down hallways until we could find a room to hide in. It was all close and we were pressed together. We need to destroy his tiara. If we do that, he'll turn back into normal Hitler, I said, and Draco nodded. Draco pulled out his wads, wands and said, I'll distract him with my, my Patronus. I can make it look like Voldemort, and he'll think that it's on his side. Good idea, I shouted. We left the room and saw Sailor Germany looking for us. Expecto Patronum, Draco shouted, and suddenly a silver version of Voldemort was walking down the hallway towards Hitler. He stopped and began to talk to the silvery villain. I started running and jumped through fake Voldemort, grabbing Hitler's tiara and pulling it from his head. He, he shouted as his sarcasm went away and he turned back into regular Hitler. I pulled up the switch that Omi gave me. This is for Nomi, you dictator! I drove the blade into Hitler's forehead. He fell to the ground, twitching until I stepped on his throat and let out a battle cry that sounded like a mixture of dolphins and dinosaurs. We have to get the AIDS cure, I shouted to Draco, and we ran back to the cure room. 
Inside the floating tube was a pill. I shattered it and grabbed the pill and swallowing it. Suddenly, I felt the AIDS leave my body. I was cured! Let's get out of here, Draco. There's still more evil people to stop. We're lucky no one got killed. And we left. Wow. This is pretty messed up. And like I said, I'm only a fifth of the way through it, so I have a feeling it's going to get stranger before it gets saner. So, I'm going to stop right here for now, and when we come back, continue with chapters 11 through 20 of The Battle for the Worlds, Beyond Worlds, Beyond.